Welcome everyone, Christine here with a discussion about Kronos in Age of Mythology Retold, the ruler of the Titans, who has a good amount of power, especially when we're thinking about offensive power that is available in the game. His initial god power, Deconstruction, targets an enemy building to deconstruct it. The enemy player will get their resources back, but removing a key structure can really hurt an opponent in a particular battle. This is one of the reasons why if you are looking to play aggressively as the Atlanteans, Kronos is a great choice because you can remove their towers, you can remove their blacksmith, so on and so forth. This is a fairly substantial benefit. Then, Kronos increases the number of buildings that can be simultaneously time-shifted and reduces the cost of time-shifting defensive buildings. What is the benefit here? Well, the benefit in this scenario is that you can get a bunch of your buildings all across the map and have map control in a way that no one else has because you can build you can construct those buildings in safe locations like your base and then put them in more vulnerable locations to just squeeze the enemy out of their map control and if you can effectively surround your opponent with buildings that's going to create a lot of issues for them now on top of that Beyond the time-shifting benefit, uh, others are for free, like towers and palaces cost 50% of their price, so you probably wouldn't want to do too many of those. Like, if you're going to go for tower rushing, I would not necessarily say Kronos is the best choice for that, and there's downsides with respect to it anyway. But there is a substantial benefit, you know, to get your military buildings closer to the enemy or to build like a forward base closer to the enemy. And it's like, okay, let me just move my barracks, my temple, all that closer. Buildings are constructed 25% faster per nearby manor. This is a pretty substantial benefit because it not only allows you to access those buildings and use them faster and so on, but it also frees up a villager, assuming you have a villager or citizen in the case of the Atlanteans, it frees up a citizen much faster than otherwise you would have. Then you receive two free myth units instead of one when advancing to the next stage. So Kronos is all about aggression. He's about, okay, I'm gonna get to H2. I'm gonna get two free myth units. Um, or I'm going to get to each free, you know, get two behemoths as an example, you know, getting two behemoths, pretty substantial. And then law, siege, and myth units return 20% of their resource cost, which further and further incentivizes aggression. Don't get me wrong. The Atlanteans have not necessarily issues, but in 1v1, you know, you can talk about Gaia's economic benefits, but if you're looking for an aggressive playstyle, Kronos, it really does make it work. I do think Gaia overall is stronger, but she does have her shortcomings, which I'll talk about in a future video. So anyway, let, that's the benefits that Kronos has. Let's talk about the minor gods that he has available. So you either have Prometheus or Leto. Leto, kind of not that great, I would dare say. So she gives you line of sight for oracles. She does give you 10% bonus favor, how to gather favor capacity for them. But the thing about that is like oracles, like the thing about oracles is if you look at them, it's not like oracles are that difficult, you know, to get. So a lot of Atlantean favor, like they're cheap. They construct pretty quickly. Well, cheap in terms of food, not necessarily gold. But the main bottleneck early on is not gold. It's actually food. So if you're thinking like, oh, Leto can generate me a lot more favor, you know, 10% for Greeks would be a thing, but, you know, you still need, uh, you'll still want to get a decent amount of um, uh, of oracles to do this. Now, 15 or 15% 15 vulnerability to pierce damage attacks reduction, pretty substantial for heroes, for human soldiers, and 20% for automatons, making them significantly more durable but the problem is spider lair is a very situational god power like yes you can deny the enemy control you can use it on say oh okay so this there's this gold mine the enemy's probably going to want to go over there for that gold mine or that tree line or that hunt 
so you can use it to harass their villager, but at the same time, very, very situational in that respect. Though you can certainly make the enemy uh, pay a price. Problem is automatons, not really great unit when you consider like, you know, the six favorite cost, nine gold. Like they're just like, they're very cheap as myth units, but they're also not great as myth units from my point of view. Then you look at Prometheus, he gives you Valor, so he tar converts one of your human units to a hero and heals it fully. Now, this starts off relatively cheaply. The cost will eventually ramp up, but initially when you do get Valor, you can use it and reuse it again and again uh, on your citizens in particular for economic benefit. Prometheans, cheap units, but the thing about Prometheans is that compared to the base game, compared to the original game, in Retold, Prometheans are significantly more useful. On top of that, it also reduces the time required to promote your human units to heroes. And he also gives you a significant benefit for those hero citizens. So they construct faster, they work faster, 20% benefit. And keep in mind, you already have a construction speed benefit as Kronos. So like Prometheus, between Leto and Prometheus, there's no discussion from my perspective. But when you combine these two benefits, it ends up being fairly substantial. I'm sure there's a place for automatons, but I admit, I'm struggling to see it. In tier three, you either get Hyperion or Rhea. Now, don't get me wrong on this. Satyrs are pretty powerful myth units. Slow, to be sure, but he does give you regeneration for your hero. So if you combine that with, of course, like Valor, pretty powerful ability. Like this is the thing about Kronos. There's a lot of things that mesh well with Prometheans as opposed to Leto. Leto is just not especially uh, that great. And speaking about that, like he converts all your oracles to heroes and any newly trained oracles are heroes. That's pretty damn powerful. Gotta, gotta admit that particular benefit is powerful. But then you also have Rhea. Her trait, her god power, situational, if you're dealing with an opponent that may get, you know, an expensive but powerful unit, traitor is great, like, you know, mountain giants, colossi, hydras, you know, if someone's getting anything like that, turning them against, uh, you know, using this against them can be great. Then you can also get favor from your town centers, pretty nice uh, to have that, benefits for your Arcus and Terma in terms of protecting them from piercing attacks for Terma and hack attacks for your Arcus. She returns all the favor of all mythological improvements that you have spent. So that's a pretty nice substantial benefit over there. And, um, and she removes it for all others. So this can save you a fairly substantial amount of favor that you can then use for myth units, in particular these behemoths, because like, yeah, remember, you have the ability of getting buildings closer to the enemy. Now, normally slower myth units would be a downside, but you combine it with Kronos, like just forward teleporting temples, right? Without having, like, this is the thing, you can argue that, oh, I can just send citizens ahead. Yeah, but you're risking your citizens doing so in a lot of ways that flexibility that you get from just like being able to build something in your base and move it forward is pretty substantial it depends on your army if you're capable of defending it of course the enemy might rush it and you can also get the naval benefit so with hyperion or with rhea you're going to get some fairly sizable um benefits regardless of who you pick it may depend on who you're dealing with like if you're dealing with large swarms of enemy units, you know, Chaos may be more useful, Satyrs may be more useful, though I'd say Satyrs are also really strong against single targets, but they're also good against swarms of enemies. Uh, Traitor and Behemoths, like, you know, enemies trying to turtle or anything like that, like, yeah, Behemoth can be a great choice over there. And then in Tier 4, you either get Helios, which gives you a lot of mobility with your army, obviously not as much as a sky passage you get probably the single best myth unit in tier 4 sent to manus these guys are great against myth units right they're not too expensive in terms of their gold resource right uh, favor wise 
different discussion. Of course, you do get a strong defensive benefit with mirror towers. You get a defend a benefit for uh, siege weapons that can be useful. And then, yeah, of course, an upgrade over there. And then a, an upgrade for Fire Siphon, so they're more useful. Or you can go with Atlas, with Argus, Guardians of Io, improving your buildings, and also getting an ability that might win you the game outright, because Implode is freaking ridiculous. It's a god power that's strong against both buildings and units. Like, it will devastate an enemy base. When you use this, sure, you know, and it, some units might escape so many units, but you use this right as right just before you're re ready to launch your attack. This can obliterate your enemy, and before they recover, you throw in everything you have, or you can, you can use it defensively. Like you see a massive enemy attack wave, just pump it and implode there. Most of that attack wave is not going to make it out, and you can just send your army to do other things. So, Alice is a great choice. Like, this is the nice thing about Kronos. Except like Leto, you look at the gods that he has. He has a great selection of tier 3 and tier 4 gods. And unlike many other major gods in the game, who might have a really powerful choice, but then not necessarily a great choice, Kronos has a lot of good choices for minor gods that not are only strong in isolation, but are strong with his own particular playstyle. Like aggressiveness, myth units... Getting siege back, you know, get, getting the cost you spent for uh, siege and myth units back. That is all pretty damn powerful when you think about it. So you can be extremely aggressive. Now he doesn't have the economy of Gaia, nor does he have like the sky passage capability of Uranus. But well, I think Gaia is a great choice in a lot of ways in multiplayer, like. The offensive potential that you have with Kronos should not be understated. And this is actually one of the downsides if you're playing Gaia. Like, you have a lot of economic power, and you have power later on, but early on you're kind of vulnerable. You're basically playing a god who wants to boom. She's really good at it, but keep in mind some of the downsides she does have as well. Kwasi and Sanya, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.